It has now been four months since Vladimir Putin sent his troops on the shittiest road trip ever. <laughs> and not only has he failed to quickly overwhelm Ukraine, he's managed to unite the rest of Europe against him. A landmark announcement today, NATO formally invited Sweden and Finland to join the alliance, and President Biden announced that the U.S. will strengthen its military posture in Europe. NATO's 30 member countries are poised to add two more. The move will more than double the length of NATO's border with Russia. And I'm pleased to announce that we now have an agreement. Sweden and Finland applied for NATO membership last month. Putin's decision to invade one neighbor had them worried he might be willing to attack another. After 200 years of military non-alignment, Sweden has chosen a new path. Wow, this is huge. Sweden is joining NATO. You understand that they've been a neutral country for 200 years. 200 years! Even when the world wars were happening, they were sitting on the side like, well, that's none of my business. <laughs> But today, they are ending their neutrality. This is so wild. This is like the moment in a kung fu movie where the monk drops his broomstick and is like, I'm taking a new vow mm, <laughs> to whip some ass. Ah! <laughs> and surely at this point, even Vladimir Putin can admit that this invasion has been an abject failure, right? Because you, you realize the whole reason he gave for invading Ukraine was to stop the expansion of NATO, and now his war has caused the expansion <laughs> of NATO. You know? <laughs> it's sort of like... It's sort of like those, um, those dare anti-drug programs. Remember those? They try to scare kids away from drugs by sending cops into schools who are like, gather around, let me teach you about drugs. And then 12-year-old kids were like, okay, crack sounds fun. <laughs> We're doing crack, guys. <laughs> now, look, it is a big deal. It is a big deal that Sweden and Finland are joining NATO. But I, I'll be honest, I don't know if it's gonna scare Russia into retreat. Because let's be honest, these people aren't exactly the Vikings they used to be, you know? Yeah, back in the day, they would pillage your village and have sex with you on Showtime, you know? <laughs> but these days, they're not exactly military superpowers. I mean, their fighter jets are probably made by Ikea, you know? <laughs> yeah, they look great, but you don't want to sit on them. <laughs> Actually, you know what, maybe, maybe that's what they should do. Yeah, they should use their Ikea powers to help them win the war in Ukraine. <laughs> that's what they should do, they should... They should try and distract the troops with meatballs. Just be like, would you like some? Would you like some? Or, or they should put those stickers on the floor all over Ukraine. Yeah, because that way, the Russian troops will never get where they're going, okay? <laughs> Where's Kiev? I keep ending up in the kitchen section. God damn it, again, again, Boris, again. <laughs> but let's move on from the war in Europe to the war that America is waging on women's bodies. Ever since the Supreme Court decided that having a child is a sacred choice between a woman and her state legislature, abortion laws have been chaos. Because you see, some states banned abortion, some states are protecting abortion, and other states banned abortion but then their courts unbanned those bans, so abortion is legal again until they reban it. Which means right now, women's reproductive rights are as unpredictable as the Mac rib. It's here, it's gone, it's here, it's gone, it's back again, it's gone. <laughs> and it turns out the overturning of Roe v. Wade has been such an earthquake that it sent shockwaves through the rest of the world. In fact, France and Israel saw what happened in America and decided to strengthen their abortion rights in their countries. Imagine that. Just imagine that. And I don't know, I don't know if you remember this, but that's what Canada did with guns, right? They saw the two mass shootings in America and they took away Canadian guns. So I guess in a way, in a way, America still is a world leader, you know? <laughs> yeah, America does something and that leads the world in the opposite direction. <laughs> Yeah, at this point, America's almost like the dumb kid in class that you reverse cheat off of. You know, it's just like, he circled C, so it's definitely not C. <laughs> but the big question in the states is, if abortion is illegal, how are the states going to enforce that? Well, it turns out they might have a snitch in your pockets. In the wake of the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, many women are now deleting their period tracking apps. 
Now, privacy experts are concerned that data from apps like Flow and Clue could potentially be used to identify someone that's seeking an abortion. The data on your phone in apps, search data, and other digital data is not necessarily protected by HIPAA. I think it's important that people realize there have been past court cases where online searches for abortion pills or abortion services have been used to prosecute That's women. Right. That's right. If prosecutors are aggressive enough, they could use your apps or your search history on your phone to prove that you had an abortion, which, first of all, it's a very unhealthy practice in a relationship. You don't search through anyone's phone, okay? It destroys trust. <laughs> don't do it. And also, what a shit world for women to be living in. Think about, like, you need to use your phone for everything, especially period tracking or, or where you're gonna find an abortion clinic. Like, how are you gonna search for abortion pills without Google? Or are you just gonna have to write a question on a piece of paper, throw it out the window, and hope for the best? <laughs> But that's where, that's where we are in America right now. Women taking care of their own health have to cover their tracks online like they're planning a heist. They've got to disable location services. They have to talk to each other through encrypted apps. They have to kill the Duolingo owl before it snitches on them in English and Italian. <laughs> and you know... You know, this puts into perspective just how much our phones know about all of us. Right? Only when they say the government's gonna use the things on your phone to come after you, because your phones know where you go, you know, who you're with, what we eat, what we buy, which actor we can't remember from that movie whose name we forgot. <laughs> it means at any moment, cops could just bust down your door like, bam, you're under arrest! And by the way, it's Richard Gere. Yeah, that was him. <laughs> That's why whenever I use apps or anything online, I try to throw the authorities off. Yeah, like whenever I'm doing something shady, I never search, where do I find weed? No. <laughs> I search, where does Mitch McConnell find weed? <laughs> Yeah. Now, now the cops are looking for Mitch McConnell and I've got the munchies. <laughs> All right, let's talk about summer vacation. That special time of year where you don't get laid in a different city. <laughs> the US travel industry is expecting record numbers this weekend as the summer season kicks off with some 42 million people driving to their vacation spots. So if you have to pee, go now because we are not stopping. <laughs> and believe it or not, as chaotic as it's gonna be on the roads, it turns out it could be even worse in the sky. Hundreds of flights canceled across the U.S. today. More than 1,000 flights canceled over the weekend. The summer travel season is heating up, and so is frustration. For thousands of Americans this week, their summer getaways landing them in an airport Armageddon. More than 2,000 flights axed just since yesterday. Travel app Hopper reports more than a quarter of recent flights have been delayed, fueled by industry staffing shortages, soaring demand, and severe weather. The chaos comes just as airports brace for another flood of travel Travelers July 4th weekend. An anticipated 11 million to pass through airports over the holiday, despite the soaring cost of travel. Envoy Air, a regional carrier owned by American Airlines, is now offering pilots triple pay to work on their days off, saying it's part of a proactive strategy to run a reliable schedule during the peak summer travel season. Industry experts say, big picture, the airlines just weren't ready for this kind of demand coming out of the pandemic. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, hold on. Did they say airlines didn't expect <laughs> that there would be a surge in air travel after the entire planet was trapped in our bedrooms for two years straight, <laughs> speaking to our grandmothers through a hazmat suit? You didn't expect that shit? <laughs> what is it? Like, why, why is it that airlines are always shocked <laughs> by things that should be easily predictable? You're shocked? to travel after they couldn't for a long time. <laughs> oh, guys, it turns out that, that by booking too many people for the flight, there are now too many people for this flight. <laughs> there is no way to know that this could have happened. Who could have seen this coming? <laughs> of course people want to travel. We've been cooped up for years. In fact, I'll bet you half the people at January 6th were just there for a change of scenery, <laughs> you know? I was like, I don't really want to hang my pants, but it's better than staying home in Idaho. <laughs> And you gotta admit, all the TV during the pandemic made it worse. I mean, we watched all those cool shows where people were having fun in Fiji, you know, or in Paris, or in South Korea. It made everything look so cool. 
I want to play red light, green light. <laughs> so, of course, people are traveling in record numbers. And you know, you realize we don't even care that flying has gotten worse and worse. Everyone wants to travel. Everything's gotten worse about flying. Everything's delayed. Legroom is shrinking. Your bags are always on another flight going somewhere else. <laughs> but we don't have a choice, right? Airlines have got us, man. Yeah, soon the airlines are gonna be like, all right, we've replaced all the seats with just a spike that goes up your butt. <laughs> what are we gonna do? We're just gonna be like, well, lube it up, because I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> I'm going. I will say, I am happy that cabin crews and pilots are getting paid more because of this, yeah. Because they said that pilots are getting paid triple their normal salary just to come to work, which is great for them, yeah. Although I will say I'm, I'm a little worried that the airlines being so desperate might make the pilots a little cocky. Uh, what's going on, bitches? This is your captain speaking. I'm just, uh, FYI. Today I'm balling out of control. We're cruising at 50,000 feet to wherever the hell I want to go, because what are you going to do about it? Find another pilot? Ha-ha! Good luck with that. There are none. I can do whatever I want. In fact, here, check this shit out. Whoa! Whoa! Ha <laughs> ha! Man, that was fun. By the way, uh, fasten your seatbelts. Guess I should have said that first, right? <laughs> well, whatever. Enjoy your flight. Uh, where's my co-pilot? I gotta pee. Oh, there's no one here. Okay, I guess I'll just do it right here. Ah. Sit back, relax. And enjoy the flights. Bowling! Can't believe you for that pilot. What an asshole. <laughs> oh, speaking of people getting paid more, all across the United States, workers are unionizing to fight for better rights. Right? Yeah, this is happening everywhere. From Amazon to Starbucks, even Apple, and now the movement is gaining so much steam, it's even stretching back in time. Medieval times, workers in New Jersey will vote next month on forming the company's first union, the group pushing for a safer and more enjoyable workplace, citing safety concerns. They claim guests can be disruptive, make loud noises, and startle the horses, who will then throw the cast members off their backs. Unruly children and drunken adults have been known to grab actors and even reach out to touch the falcon as it flies overhead. Workers say medieval times skimps on security to save money, leaving performers to enforce boundaries and police the crowd. Wow. Do you know how wild the crowd has to be to mess with people in armor carrying swords? <laughs> I mean, I knew white people get drunk, but this is a whole other level. This is, <laughs> I'm gonna fight that horse, bro! <laughs> you know what they need to do, actually? They need to make a new policy that if you cause shit at medieval times, you get a medieval punishment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, forget getting escorted to the parking lot. You're making people's jobs a misery. You're going down to the dungeon where a group of, like, plague rats are gonna eat your dick off. That's what they should do. <laughs> You in medieval times. Because here's the thing, you're never going to stop people from getting rowdy at medieval times. It's never gonna happen. Those people are just trying to act like they're in medieval times. That's why they're trying to grab the falcon. People in the year 1130, they were definitely getting drunk and messing with birds. That was one of the only hobbies back then, right? You could drink mead and throw shit at a falcon, or you could die in the street. Those were the main activities. What are you doing next weekend? I'm dying. Oh, no, no, I'm gonna catch a falcon. So I'm glad, I'm glad these workers are trying to unionize. First of all, I love medieval times, you know? Where else can you get a glimpse of what America's gonna look like when the Supreme Court is done? But also, <laughs> also, these people deserve protections. I mean, these are serious performers. Have you seen them in character? They never break, never break character. Almost made me wonder if, like, they stay in character during the union negotiations, you know? <laughs> We hereby demandeth that our healthcare plan cover leeches. Also, our wenches and whores want maternity leave. <laughs> oh shit, I'm, I'm sorry, Kimberly and Amber. Kimberly and Amber want maternity leave. I'm sorry, I got carried away, I got carried away. <laughs> you know, whenever, whenever I see medieval times, I always wonder if 500 years from now, they're gonna have a themed restaurant where people come to watch actors pretend they're in the 2020s. <laughs> Because we're in the old times of then, you know? Is there someone who's gonna stand in the middle like, welcome to millennial times! Watch us this man of legend, Bin 
binges Netflix while also scrolling on his phone. Ooh! Ah. All right, that's it for the headlines. But before we go, let's check in on the traffic with our very own Roy Wood Jr., everybody. Oh, yeah. What's up, man? What's going on? What's up? Oh, man, good to see you. Now, good to see you. So, what's, uh, what's happening with the traffic, Roy? I, I, I don't even think we need to talk about today's traffic. You never traffic. want to talk about the traffic, Roy. No, I do. I do want to talk about traffic. I want to talk about the weekend traffic, that holiday traffic. That's going to be wild. OK, OK. We don't need to talk about this. We need to talk about this weekend. It's going to be a huge travel weekend. It is, it is. It's going to be a lot of... You just need to be wherever the traffic ain't. That's where you need to be. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, look, look, I just want to give people a couple of tips. I just want to give people a few tips on how to deal with the holiday traffic. Oh, now, like we, which roads to go on and like, like that? We, are, we already know the basics, right? We already know if you're stuck on the freeway, you just take the shoulder and you drive on the shoulder. <laughs> if, if you're in a carpool lane, you just get... You blow up the sex dolls and you put the sex dolls which in, in the carpool lane. If you got a rental car, you get the coverage, you bulldoze people out the way. And those, those, are, those are the bread and butter. But this traffic, 4th of July traffic, gonna be crazy, we gotta level up. You stuck in traffic right now? Whatever street you on, call in like a fire or a heart attack or an emergency <laughs> up the street where you trying to go and then follow the ambulance to wherever you need to go. <laughs> you just follow the ambulance. That, that sounds crazy to me. That's, I got that from Die Hard 3. It's a great movie. A lot of good traffic tips in that movie. Like, but you, you, that, that only works for a couple of miles. Yeah. It only works for a couple of miles. You know, if you're trying to go somewhere far, you have to call in eight, nine tragedies to get to where you're going. <laughs> so if you're trying to get far, it's got to be bigger than dealing with traffic. You've got to avoid traffic altogether, Trevor. How do you do you that? Gotta, you got to avoid traffic altogether. Everybody talks about, you know, the best way to avoid traffic is to leave early. Huh. <laughs> leave late. Oh, you mean like, like, like 8 p.m., 9 p.m.? I'm talking about for July 4th travel, you should leave July 10th. <laughs> leave late. Yeah, no, Roy. Leave late. Yeah, okay. Late, fine. late. Yeah, but then you miss the traffic, but you also miss July 4th, like the hot dogs, the fireworks, you miss it all. Yeah, you miss all of that, but you also miss sitting on your ass in a car for three and a half hours. <laughs> you miss the traffic, too. That's but the beauty you of July it. July 4th. What are you missing with July 4th? What you missing? What, 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 you, what you missing? The, the, the hot dog? What you, the hot dog. This is America. Every day we eat a hot dog and try to blow up some shit. This, July 4th is just a reason to do what we was already doing. People was popping fireworks in the hood where I grew up all the time. <laughs> fireworks and barbecue is a regular occurrence. No, Troy, no. no I mean, this is not something new, man. Okay, miss July 4th to escape July 4th traffic. All right, that's... That's a tip. It's a damn good tip. I don't like the judgment in your face right now. I'm not judging you. I just think it's weird. All right. Look, I'm just... But I'm, I'm... Look, it's just important over the holiday weekend that you stay safe. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You stay safe. You do your best to obey the speed limit. If you feel yourself drowsy, pull over. Do not drive drowsy, especially if you got kids in the car. If you got kids in the car and you're feeling drowsy, you pull over, let them kids drive. <laughs> kids got to kick in. And they got to pull their weight. So you let them kids drive. Yeah, but that's, that's and you illegal. just get in the back seat, get you some sleep. You got them sex dolls back there anyway. You can cuddle up and all yeah, that. Yeah, Roy, that's illegal. That's a crime. It comes off their record when they 18. There ain't nobody <laughs> tripping on no kid, hitting a couple. So what? Your six year old side swiped a couple cars. Don't nobody care. They, they, they seal the records. I'll teach you about that later. Oh, these are some fantastic tips, Roy. Any, anything else? Uh, you know what, man? I gotta bounce, man. I'm headed down to Alabama for the 4th of July. <laughs> and I think my son just pulled up. I gotta... My son driving me. How old is your son, Roy? Eight. You know what? Roy Wood Jr., everybody... 